As we know quantum mechanics is all about orthonormal functions. The wave functions that we use are uh, almost always uh, when we talk about exact solutions uh, they are either they either form an orthonormal basis or uh, they are made up by linear combinations of uh, functions that form a complete orthonormal set. So, it makes sense at this stage of our discussion to see what happens when we express trial functions as a linear combination of orthonormal functions. Okay? And we know about the properties of orthonormal functions that we have studied in the past. Great. So, uh, what we will do is uh, we will do that and we will actually come back to particle in a box with a little bit of twist when we talk about orthonormal functions. So, let us quickly recap what we learned in the previous module about variational calculation that we performed for particle in a box. There we had represented the wave function as uh, C1 F1 plus C2 F2 where F1 was x into 1 minus x, F2 was x square into 1 minus x whole square. Are they orthonormal? Okay, you figure out, but they are definitely not the functions that we get by solving the Schrodinger equation uh, exactly that we have done towards the beginning of this uh, module uh, of this uh, course. So, and this is the uh, Hamiltonian minus h cross square by 2 m d 2 d x 2. So, what we did was that we wrote this secular equation and then we found out the expressions for all of these matrix elements h 1 1, h 1 2, h 2 1, h 2 2, s 1 1, s 1 2, s 2 1, s 2 2. And then knowing these expressions and substituting e dashed for E m by h cross square this secular determinant simplified into this form 1 by 6 minus E dash by 30, 1 by 30 minus E dash by 140, 1 by 30 minus E dash by 140, 1 by 105 minus E dash by 630 that determinant is equal to 0. This uh, expands as a quadratic equation which has two roots. 51.065 and 4.93487. Of course, out of these this is the lower value that this is ground state energy. And then what we did is we wrote this in terms of uh, h cross square by m and we compared the min this minimum value that we got of energy with the exact value of energy that we got earlier. And we see the agreement is really really good. If you only if you go to the 6th place of decimal there is a difference between the calculated minimum value of energy and the uh, calculated exact value of uh, energy that we got earlier. So, uh, we are good here, but then uh, just because it has worked nicely for particle in a box does not mean that it will work if we use arbitrary wave functions for more complicated systems. We want to simplify it that is why we want to talk about uh, orthonormal basis. So, in this uh, linear combination that we have we want to write this f n's that are uh, members of a complete orthonormal set. Of course, even before going there uh, if we simply write this expression then no matter whether f n's are orthonormal or not you will get this kind of a secular determinant. Okay? Uh, last time we had just 2 by 2 determinant this will be n by n determinant that is all. And we will get n roots we have to evaluate the integrals and the one with lower energy will be uh, the ground state. Now, when we use orthonormal basis and we just touched upon this uh, before closing the previous discussion, uh, this the expressions become simpler and expressions become simpler for the uh, simple reason that uh, S i j integral of f i star f j over all space all the function space is equal to delta i j we know that. When i is equal to j then you get uh, 1 provided f1, fi and fj are normal, normalized and of course we are saying that they belong to an orthonormal basis set. So, they are normalized and if i is not equal to j then well once again remember they belong to an orthonormal set. So, if i is not equal to j then this integral becomes 0. 
So, what happens to this determinant in that case? H11 minus ES11, this S11 becomes 1. So, uh, this becomes H11 minus E. This 1, 2 position S12 becomes 0. So, the second term vanishes completely, you are left with only H12. And that happens for all the other elements all the way until H1n, this S1n also becomes 0. When you go from top to bottom in the first column, all these second terms vanish because they are of Sij type. The 2, 2 term, what happens there? S22 is equal to 1, so you get H22 minus E. So, what we see is that the diagonal elements are all like Hii minus E, off diagonal elements are all Hij, Hji, that kind of thing. Okay. So, this is what you get H11 minus E, H12, H13, so on and so forth until H1n. Then when you go down H11 minus E, H21, H21, so on and so forth until Hn1. Diagonal elements Hii minus E, that is what you get. And then already the expression has become simpler. What about H12 and H21? Can we say that they are 0? Yeah, actually we cannot. Okay. If you think that uh, they are 0, uh, it is not necessarily correct. We are going to encounter a situation where they are 0, but uh, it is not that is not the general case. Why? Because if you write this H i j any i n e j, if you write H i j that is equal to integral f i h f j. Uh, the problem is see f j usually would be the uh, Eigen function of the Hamiltonian of the uh, system that is solvable exactly. Generally that is what we choose. So, this Hamiltonian is different right. For example, well we have not taken that example yet when we take it we will see this Hamiltonian is not usually the Hamiltonian of the system for which we can solve Schrodinger equation exactly right. Even then we can write the Hamiltonian. So, it is not necessary that f j is an Eigen function of this Hamiltonian right. So, we will not get an uh, we will not get a constant coming out of the integral always sometimes we can have special cases we will see. So, what we will do is we will keep Hij for now and uh, we will set this Sij for i not equal to j to 0 and we get this kind of a, a secular determinant. Now, we take this example. We go back to our particle in a box, but we uh, include in it a twist or rather uh, a bend if you want to call it that. What is that bend or a twist? We say that here potential energy is not 0. However, we see that the uh, potential energy is x dependent for x lying between 0 and L by 2 okay, half of the box the potential energy is V1 multiplied by x where V1 is a constant. For the other half for x ranging from L by 2 to L it is V1 into L minus x. Okay. For what happens at uh, x equal to L by 2? If you take the first expression you get V1 into L by 2. If you take the second expression then also you get V1 into L by 2 right L minus L by 2 that is L by 2. So, uh, there is no discontinuity in the function as such there is a discontinuity in slope. What does the potential energy look like then? Let us say this is my particle in a box for the first half from the left your potential energy will be a straight line with a positive slope right V1 into x for the second half it will be a straight line, but with a slope that is negative equal in magnitude, but negative. Now, in uh, this system uh, let us use this trial function phi of x is equal to C1 psi of psi 1 x plus C2 psi 2 of x. What are psi 1 and psi 2? Remember what we want to do? We want to use an orthonormal function. And while using orthonormal function, it makes sense to use orthonormal eigenfunctions of the Hamiltonian 
of the system for which we can solve Schrodinger equation exactly. Then things will start making sense. You want to talk about particle in a box. The orthonormal set that you use at least to start with uh, it makes sense to take the wave functions of the Hamiltonian for a particle in a box in which the potential energy is 0 as long as the particle is inside box and we know that those solutions are something like this psi n of x is equal to root over 2 by L sin n pi x by L n as we know ranges from 1, 2, 3, 4 all the way up to infinity that is the quant those are the quantum numbers. Okay. So, remember when I say psi 1 of x I essentially mean n equal to 1 put in this expression when I say psi 2 of x I mean n equal to 2 put in this expression. Okay. So, this is uh, the formulation of our problem uh, as usual I am not going to solve every step. In fact, in this case you also do not need to solve every step you need to understand the logic. If you can solve it then uh, it is even better, but as long as you understand the logic you do not have to remember the final expression please remember that these are not things where uh, you need to know the formula or anything. Okay. You need to know only the very basic formula that we already know by now please do not try to remember the results it makes no sense at all. Okay. Try to understand the logic. Okay. So, what will we do now? Uh, we know what the potential is, we know what the trial function is and we have expressed it as a linear combination of the orthonormal uh, Eigen functions of the Hamiltonian of particle in a box for which V equal to 0 as long as the particle is within the box. Okay. Now, we want to evaluate the matrix elements one by one I will show you some steps of H11. How do we write H11? H11 integral psi 1 x star in this case of course, star is redundant it's just psi 1 x is fine because psi 1 of x is fine because it is a real function that left uh, multiplying Hamiltonian operating on psi 1 of x. Uh, let me for the record uh, we will refer to it shortly, but let me even now write it once. What is this Hamiltonian? What is the Hamiltonian for your particle in a box for which V equal to 0 inside and V equal to infinity outside? You just have the kinetic energy term is not it minus H cross square by 2 m well 1 d box. So, I might as well write d 2 d x 2 that is for the uh, particle in a box that uh, we have studied earlier. In this case particle in a box with a twist we have an additional potential energy term which itself changes its expression uh, at x equal to L by 2. So, to write the general expression I will write that Hamiltonian is minus h cross square by 2 m d 2 d x 2 plus let me just write u of x. Depending on what u x is <coughs> excuse me depending on what x is we are going to use the appropriate expression for uh, u of x the potential. Okay. So, this is what we will use depending on uh, the uh, value of x. Okay. Uh, of course, we are going to get two terms then is not it. When we expand this integral first of all there are two terms here and secondly uh, even this second term is different for uh, different ranges of x. So, I have to write two integrals one with limits from 0 to L by 2 the other with limits from L by 2 to L so that we can write this uh, analytical form of u of x. So, this is what I will write 2 by L where does 2 by L come from well psi 1 psi 2 remember psi well in this case both are psi 1. So, root 2 by L root 2 by L so I will take root 2 by L outside then integral between limits 0 to L by 2 sin pi x by L multiplying the Hamiltonian that we have written here in this case u of x is substituted by v 1 x because I am integrating only up to L by 2 that operating on sin pi x by L dx. Okay. What will the second integral be? Same thing except uh, well similar except the limits would be from L by 2 to L and instead of v 1 x here I will write v 1 into L minus x. Okay. This is what it is. So, I have written down 
the expression for H11 right. Uh, what do you get? What do you get if you try to say expand the first integral? Uh, well, that is a final answer. Let me write the first integral. So, here if I take this sin pi x by L minus h cross by 2 m d 2 d x 2 sin pi x by L and what I will do is I will bring this here also root 2 by L here root 2 by L here. So, this uh, first one I can write it as I 1 here will be equal to integral essentially psi 1 of x well do not forget the limit 0 to L by 2. This one is Hamiltonian ok uh, since we know perturbation theory already I will use the language of perturbation theory here. I will write 0th order Hamiltonian, 0th order Hamiltonian means the Hamiltonian of a particle in a box in which potential energy inside the box is 0 ok. So, you can think that this is the 0th order Hamiltonian and this is the first order correction ok. So, uh, I will just write like this operating on psi 1 of x dx. Now, you already know what h 0 h 0 th operating on psi 1 of x is that is basically uh, the left hand side of uh, Schrodinger equation for n equal to 1. So, it will be uh, your E 1 multiplied by psi 1 n and for particle in a box where potential energy is 0 what is E 1? h square by 8 pi square m is not it? Yeah, uh, if L equal to 1, if L equal to L then it will be uh, L square ok. So, this turns out to be the just the energy and then you integrate from, uh, so this is equal to something like I will write epsilon 1 integral 0 to L by 2 psi 1 of x whole square dx. So, now tell me what is integral of psi 1 x whole square between limit 0 to L by 2. If I had integrated from 0 to L what would it have been? It would have been 1 total probability. So, 0 to L by 2 for the symmetric wave function here that is going to be half is not it. So, this is how you expand. What about the second one? Uh, in well second term arising out of the first part here it will be V 1 will come out and then you will get integral 0 to L by 2 we will write. I will erase all this and I will write. Okay. Let me just erase everything. What I am saying is I take root over 2 by L sin pi x by L and I am multiplying it by V 1 x then again sin pi by x by L. Will you agree that ok I will call it I 2, I 2 will be equal to integral 0 to L by 2 I can write again psi 1 as we discussed earlier multiplied by x multiplied by psi 1 dx and V 1 will come out is not it, V 1 is a constant remember. So, this will be V 1 integral 0 to L by 2 x into sin square pi x divided by L dx. Does that ring a bell or does this ring a bell? If I only change the limit from 0 to L, uh, uh, if I only change the limit from 0 to L by 2 to 0 to L then this integral would be your uh, average value of position. Here I am just integrating from 0 to L by 2. So, we know how to solve this integral using integration by parts. So, that is what one has to do. So, I am skipping all the steps here, but I have told you uh, how to go about it and well I would encourage you to do this by yourself. When you do that and then when you do uh, when you perform a similar treatment 
to the second term that is there then the final result that I will show you is this h square by 8 ml square remember what h square by 8 ml square is h square by 8 ml square is essentially the energy of the particle in a box when potential energy inside is 0 potential energy outside is infinity okay, all right. So, that is what it is and the second term arises out of uh, well I will call it the second term because I have written it as V1 into L multiplied by something that arises from the second terms of these uh, integrals. Okay. If you do it, it is a little long, but it is uh, definitely not undoable. Okay. So, this is the result we get. So, this here is our H11. H12 and H21 turn out to be 0 and we will discuss little later why it is that they are equal to 0. Remember they are not necessarily equal to 0, but we will prove that they are equal to 0. H22 turns out to be h square by 2 ml square multiplied by V1 L by 4. Achha, this h square by 8 ml square that is energy of n equal to 1. right? So, uh, I think I have written it later, but in case I have not I will write it like this, this is epsilon 1. Do you agree with me that this is epsilon 2? What is epsilon n? I will write here is equal to n square h square by 8 m l square. Right? So, if n equal to 2 then this becomes 4, 4 by 8 is half that is how you get the 2 in the denominator. So, this is very nice is not it? The first energy that we get h 1 well the first matrix element that we get that is essentially the energy of particle in a box for v equal to 0 plus now again remembering our uh, remembering what we learnt in perturbation theory plus we can say a correction term provided v 1 is very small h 2 2 is energy of the second energy level plus a correction term provided v 1 is small and the corrections are not exactly the same. Here it is v 1 l uh, well for h 2 2 it is v 1 l by 4 for h 1 1 it is v 1 l by 4 plus 1 by pi square. Okay. We will uh, see how this is important, okay. but let us go ahead and finish our discussion. The uh, secular determinant we get is this. Okay. And it is very nice because it is a block factorized determinant since h 1 2 into h since h 1 2 is equal to h 2 1 is equal to 0 we get a block factorized determinant. And block factorized matrices and determinants are lovely because uh, now see the solution becomes so easy. So, uh, what happens then is this, this is h 1 1, this is h 2 2. Ideally, you would have to write h 1 1 into h 2 2 is equal to 0 minus well h 1 1 into h 2 2 equal to 0 that is what we get. If we did not have non-zero of diagonal elements, then it would be h 1 1 into h 2 2 minus h uh, 2 1 into h 1 2 and you would have to solve whatever equation you got. Now, h 1 1 into h 2 2 equal to 0 directly gives you h 1 1 equal to 0 or h 2 2 equal to 0. right? So, you do not have to uh, even go into a quadratic equation. When h 1 1 equal to 0 I simply get E equal to h square by 8 ml square plus V 1 L into 1 by 4 plus 1 by pi square. So, this thing that we get here is really one of the roots for energy. So, what we see is that one of the solutions is 
the uh, energy for h equal to uh, for n equal to 1 plus a correction term that is one of the roots. The second root you get by equating h2 to, to 0 is e equal to h square by 2 ml square plus v1 l by 4. So, once again energy of n equal to 2 plus a correction term that is very nice. So, we know that these two are uh, the energies of n equal to 1 and n equal to 2 for the regular particle in a box that we have studied earlier right and that is really very nice. So, whatever energy we got earlier plus some correction term ok. So, that is the advantage of having block factorized determinant we have got the two roots uh, which one is lower in energy which one is higher in energy most likely this is lower in energy yeah unless this v1 l into 1 by 4 plus 1 by pi square this is really really large. If that happens then uh, well but then that will add here also. So, uh, this is the lower energy I think we can say that which uh, with uh, sufficient confidence ok. Now, if you did this same treatment from perturbation theory which we are not doing explicitly you would get the same result ok. And uh, we should be willing to believe that also because the result is definitely in, in uh, line with what one gets from perturbation theory the 0th order energy plus a first order correction right that is what you get. So, these two theories are in agreement with this. The important thing here is that there is no contribution of psi 2 in ground state energy. Ground state energy is the uh, unperturbed energy now if I can say plus a correction term ok. If this is small it is nowhere close to the energy of the second level and that happens because these h12 and h21 are 0. So, now we better discuss why is it that h12 or h21 must be equal to 0 in the case that we have discussed. So, let us write it out h12 is integral 1 to l and now I can write 1 to l because I am writing the general expression for u of x. I am not writing uh, v1x or v1 into l minus x depending on the range I choose I'll, I can substitute u of x. Uh, as v 1 x or v 1 into l minus x. So, this is the general expression we get of course, we can break it down into two terms and when we do that the in the first term again what do I have? I have psi 1 then Hamiltonian unperturbed Hamiltonian operating on psi 1. So, of course, I will get uh, uh, sorry uh, the unperturbed Hamiltonian operating on uh, psi 2 not psi 1 I am not talking about h 1 1 anymore I am talking about h 1 2. So, the eigenfunction that we have of the Hamiltonian gives me an eigenvalue of E2 when the unperturbed Hamiltonian operates on psi 2 I get E2 which is constant comes out of the bracket integrate from 0 to L psi 1 of x multiplied by psi 2 of x dx. What is that? That is definitely equal to 0 because psi 1 and psi 2 are orthogonal to each other. What about the second integral? Integral 0 to L psi 1 of x u of x psi 2 of x. Uh, actually to evaluate it there is no need for me to write the explicit form of u of x because one thing I know for sure is that no, uh, it goes up and goes down remember it is like a triangle. So, it is symmetric with respect to the uh, midpoint. So, the c psi 1 of x is symmetric that we know already it is uh, a sign function that uh, does not go through a node psi 2 of x is anti symmetric like this u of x is symmetric. And now we have studied this when we talked about particle in a box allowed transition uh, disallowed transition what happens when the integrand is a triple product of two symmetric and one anti symmetric functions the integrand is anti symmetric and we know by now that an integral of an antisymmetric integrand is equal to 0 is necessarily equal to 0. So, both the terms of h12 or h21 for that matter would be equal to 0 that is why h12 and h21 is 0 in this case and that is what makes life very simple for us. This uh, leads to this uh, interesting observation that psi 2 of x makes no contribution to ground state energy only psi 1 of x makes a contribution to it. This is a uh, general uh, uh, this is 
sort of a subset of a more general phenomenon that when we express our trial wave function as a linear combination of orthonormal functions, then the functions with higher energy have lower contribution to the ground state. Okay. So, now let us write again using the notation we learnt in perturbation theory, Hamiltonian is 0th order Hamiltonian plus first order correction, phi this is what we have written in our earlier treatment or variation uh, variational treatment phi equal to c1 psi1 plus c2 psi2. And now we are saying that the size are Eigen functions of the 0th order Hamiltonian with Eigen values e j 0th. So, the secular equations we get in this case what would they be? They would be h11 minus e, h12, h21, h22 minus e what we have learnt earlier. What is hii? Instead of h11, h22 separately I will just do hii. This is what hii is two terms. The first term I hope you can see without much hassle we have done it just now. First term is e j 0 multiplied by integral psi i star psi i over all space which will be equal to 1 plus integral psi 1 well psi i first order correction to Hamiltonian operating on psi i psi i. So, what is this the second term? The first term of course is e i 0 uncorrected energy second term as we have learned in our perturbation the, well uh, perturbation theoretical treatment this is the first order correction to energy. So, we get E i 0 plus first order correction to energy. So, that is what we will use and this is what we get and then if you solve the quadratic equation I am jumping steps here and if you use a power series expansion then this is the approximate result you get of you will get there will, get, there will be more terms but they will make progressively lower contributions we get E 1 equal to E 1 0 plus first order correction to E 1 plus this H 1 2 square divided by E 1 0 plus E 1 first minus 1 and so forth. If you now remember the earlier problem of particle in a box with that triangular uh, potential you will remember that H 1 2 is equal to 0. There it automatically follows that E is equal to the 0th order energy plus the first order correction. For other general solutions if you work in the regime that the energy levels are sufficiently uh, uh, the spacing between the energy levels successive energy levels is sufficiently large if you work in that regime which is a reasonable approximation a reasonable uh, thing to uh, imagine then this difference is going to be large. If this is large then this term will become small because h 1 2 is never very large. So, then approximately you get E equal to E 1 0 plus E 1 first. So, the higher terms do not even contribute to the ground state energy. Okay. So, that is what we have and now to close this discussion let us just introduce the general case. We are talking about linear combination of orthonormal wave functions and what we have said so far is that it is the coefficient that is the variational parameter that is not necessarily the case. I can also have variational parameters within these orthonormal functions themselves, the f's themselves. Okay. For example, for hydrogen atom we can write the function like this sum over j c j e to the power minus alpha j r square. So, this is this function here is similar to the 1s wave function with the exception that this coefficient in the exponent is also a variational parameter. So, two variational parameters gives me greater flexibility and of course, you can play around with number of terms. So, once again remember hydrogen atom of course, is exactly solvable, but if we do a variational calculation using uh, this kind of parameter, this kind of a uh, uh, this kind of a uh, linear combination and if you keep increasing the number of n's what we see is this, if you use n equal to 1 this is the energy that you get minus 0 0.424413. If you increase the numbers one go from 1 to 2 it becomes lower to 5 even lower 16 minus 0 0.49980. And now the exact calculation let me remind you in terms of what we have given here mu e to the power 4 by 16 pi square epsilon 0 square h square the exact calculation that we got earlier is minus 0 
So now when you increase the number of terms to 16 you get very close to the exact solution. Okay. So what we learn from here is that in the general case uh, if you increase the number of terms you get closer to the energy and that is uh, by using the power of variation theorem upper limit theorem. One thing to understand here if we include the variational parameter in the functions themselves is that the secular determinant is complicated right because the variational parameter it is also there in the functions. So in fact we will not be able to uh, get an analytical solution like what we have been getting so far you have to solve this numerically put in number see what solution that you get change the number see what solution that you get and you need different kinds of algorithms and this opens up the field of computational chemistry. I think I said this opens up field of computational chemistry once earlier well this really takes us into the domain of computational chemistry but uh, let us talk a little more about this a little later. The other thing that happens here is that now see we are we have slowly started going away from the exact solutions. In we have changed the exact solution 1 is orbital by this introducing this variational parameter a little more significantly than what we have been doing so far. So eventually we will reach a situation where you perhaps even do not have to start from the exact solutions any kind of orthonormal set will do okay. but let us wait for that. For now we close this discussion and finally we are now ready to resume our discussion of many electron atom the discussion will perform will be on helium.